uh, protection of our children who have not been able to get the vaccine yet. Each year during confirmation, our, we usually start our confirmation and end our confirmation with some affirmations. And the affirmation that we end as we go out into the world from our confirmation service are these words from the founder of Methodism. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. These are the words that United Methodists live by as we go about being disciples of Jesus Christ, which these students are confirming today as one of their purposes in life. So let us join our hearts and spirits this morning on this day of confirmation and Pentecost as we light the light of Christ and invite the Spirit of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the presence of God to be with us. Let us sing together.
Sunday is Psalm 90. Yahweh, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next, before the mountains were born. You brought forth the earth and the world. You are God without beginning or end. And our lesson this morning for the day of Pentecost is from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the disciples all met in one room. Suddenly they heard what sounded like a violent rushing wind from heaven. The noise filled the entire house in which they were sitting. Something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As we gather for this confirmation service on this day of Pentecost, surrounded by banners, balloons, pinwheels, all representing the presence of God's Spirit, it's so fitting that we breathe in together this moment feeling the wind of God moving on our faces, seeing the dance of whirligigs on the breeze, feeling God's breath. It is fitting that we are confirming these students on a day that we celebrate God's powerful presence of spiritual breath. For this confirmation class has lived through a year of being fearful of breath. Being so very careful not to breathe in germs that could threaten their very lives. Wearing masks and continuing to wear masks until they become fully vaccinated because breathing the air could still be dangerous for them. I'm so thankful that our community here in Chatfield has been so careful and so wise during this last year. I'm so thankful that our students have been cared for by our school district, and any time a threat was perceived, they were protected. Even though I know the isolation and disruption was so very difficult for our students. I saw how discouraged they were on yet another Zoom call in the evening to meet with me, or coming into church masked after a long, long day of being masked. I could see how much they just wanted to be free, to breathe freely again. So I am breathing sighs of relief because everyone continues to be safe. And our school district is making the vaccine available to any student who is eligible to receive it. So after all that this year has meant for our confirmation students, isn't it fitting that we are celebrating their entrance into the life of the church as young adults on the day we celebrate God's breath moving among us, creating something new, creating the church through the breath of the Holy Spirit. The scriptures say that on the day of Pentecost, the followers of Jesus were gathered together in an upper room. When strangely and wonderfully a sound like a rushing wind entered the room and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Had they been filled with the Holy Spirit before? <coughs> Probably. But it was at this moment that they felt the breath of God that had been with them since giving them birth. They felt God's Spirit is more than just living and breathing. They felt it as the power of life, the power of holy life. Not only were their lungs filled up with God's breath, but their whole being was filled with God's message of hope and new possibilities. So much so that the life that they had to share it with others, in whatever language they could to be heard and understood. And so God's church began, breath by breath. Isn't it good that we can always breathe in the Spirit's breath 
safely, even in the midst of a virus that is transmitted through breathing. The Spirit's breath has given these students the motivation to continue to meet together. They have come together whenever I've asked them to through Zoom, in person, wearing masks, so that they could fulfill their obligation to be here this day. Even in the midst of these difficult times, we had good times together. They have grown in their own spirits and have spoken truths together that honor God's spirit that is within them. And I am so very proud of them. And I'm looking forward to the way God's spirit will continue to work in their lives. I'm looking forward to seeing how God's spirit will continue working in all of our lives. What will the church look like after all of this? Do you think we might be in a new season of Pentecost where now that we know how precious breathing is, we might pay attention more to God's breathing and God's breath within us? Where we might be more willing and eager to share all the ways God's breath kept us sane and alive and hope-filled through this last year? We might not have felt a great rushing wind enter our lives as those first disciples did at Pentecost, and we may not be able to speak in different languages. But are we not certainly appreciative even more to feel the breath of God's wind on our cheeks as we go out and about? Many of us now without masks for the first time. To smell the amazing aroma of lilacs fully as we breathe fully again. To experience again full laughter with one another, full joy, full smiles. And just as whirly gigs dance in the wind, may our spirits dance with God's spirit in this world as we proclaim with the disciples. God has shown us the path of life, and we are filled with God's presence. So now let us confirm these men and women of God who are filled with God's Spirit, proclaiming while doing so, God has been active and breathing in our lives throughout this most difficult year, and God's breath will continue to give us hope and life. Amen. We recognize and affirm that these young people have been drawn to God by word, holy example, sacraments, and prayer. Today they will speak for themselves the vows of baptism, thereby confirming the faith that was bestowed on them by God through their own baptism. And they will profess membership in Christ Church Universal and the United Methodist Church. From this day forward, we will no longer call them children of the church, but young adults. So now I present to you for membership into Christ United Methodist Church, Emily Fitzgerald, Colton Johnson, and Owen Collette on the confirmation of their faith. And so I ask you to stand as you make your confession and profession of faith in church membership. And all of you who are also baptized into the Universal Church may also reaffirm your own recognition of sin, and profession of faith. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? 
If so, say, I do. And from you, an affirmation. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment of Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the gospel and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these young people with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. And I invite you to all stand as we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Confirmation students. I ask you to remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit worked within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And now we welcome you on your profession of faith to membership at Chatfield United Methodist Church. As members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? If so, say, I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to you, to your love and your care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And I invite you now to sing a blessing to the students.
Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of these young adults and kindle in them the fire of your love. Give them wisdom to discern truth, compassion to seek the way of love, faithfulness to live a life pleasing to God, openness to see the way isn't always straight. May the life of Jesus be their guiding principle. May their lives so enlighten us that we learn from them how to be more faithful disciples of Jesus the Christ. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever assured of your love for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As part of our confirmation uh, lessons and our work together, the students construct these candles which hold symbols of them, of the life that God has given them, and all the ways that God works in them to bring about who they are. And today these candles will be used in our service as part of the ceremony of confirmation. We will be using a number of symbols as we confirm our students and remind them that they go out as disciples of Jesus Christ. Today, by your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you have chosen of your own free will to call yourselves Christians, disciples of the Christ. The scriptures tell us that after Jesus taught his disciples the Beatitudes, all about what it means to live the Christian life, he then compared his disciples to salt and light, saying, You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. These are very strange and wonderful symbols, and I invite you to receive these symbols as you proclaim yourselves disciples of the man who spoke the Beatitudes to us. The first symbol is salt. Salt to reassure us. In Jesus' day, salt was a precious thing. Most people did not eat salted food. Can you imagine popcorn or french fries without salt? But that is how it was in Jesus' day. Only the privileged ate salted food. It was precious, a delicacy. You are to God a precious thing. God has chosen you to do the work of peace and justice in this world. Can you imagine the world without peace and justice? As much as salt is important to food, you are important to God's world. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. And Jesus teaches us that you are the light of the world. Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection, gives you light salvation, joy, and peace, which you can share to choose to share with those around you, or you can choose to hide it as under a bushel. But Jesus te teaches us that that would be silly, that light is for sharing, so that people everywhere can see the marvelous love and salvation of God through Jesus Christ. So I invite you to come forward as I give you light. You are the light of the world. Owen, you are the light of the world. Emily, you are the light of the world. 
Let your light shine before others that they may see God and glorify God through all that you do in your light. Throughout your years at Chatfield United Methodist Church, you have been nurtured in the Sunday school, in the teaching of the Word of God. So today we give you your very own Bible with your very own name on it. May you learn of it so that you can know how to be salt and light and disciples of Jesus Christ. We rejoice with you in your public confession of your faith, and now may the presence of God go with you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple as of Jesus Christ. Amen. Colton, we rejoice with you in your public confession of your faith. Now may the presence of God go with you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Colton, we rejoice with you in your public confession of your faith. Now may the presence of God go with you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to invite you to come with me. And let us speak a charge to our confirmation, to our confirmands, who are no longer students, but young adults. We affirm that you have, our chosen people of God, go out in the faith you have confessed. We will walk beside you on your journey.
for God. Let us go in the strength of the Spirit who is breathing in us, filling our hearts, our souls, and our minds with the love of God and the grace of God, so that all we do, every moment of our day, can glorify God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 